Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labucan with the Rocks and Stocks News Show. I'm doing another of my executive interviews with uh, mining companies. I'm a big fan of what's happening in the Eureka Mining District, just outside of Eureka. One of the big success stories in the mining sector over the last few months has been I-80 Gold. They found a uh, well, they've actually got what I think is two world-class projects on their hands. To the west of the uh, historical Archimedes pit, they've hit the Eastern Deeps uh, gold discovery. And uh, uh, just above that, the 426 zone. And uh, that's got them easy access from the bottom of the pit. Then in uh, the last couple of months of 2022, they announced a CRD discovery that's just really off the charts. Um, when you look at it, it's got gold or it's got your classic CRD metals, which is your silver, lead and zinc uh, with an overprint of extreme high grade gold. So collectively, they're finding some very valuable rock and uh, Golden Lake is well positioned in the area. Don Hoy re, uh, came, became their uh, VP Exploration shortly after I uh, arrived as an advisor to the company. And uh, we're going to have a great conversation today about the prospects for Golden Lake Exploration and what is uh, an exciting uh, exploration camp in Eureka, Nevada. Don, thanks a lot for joining us today. Oh, thank you very much, Alan. It's, uh, it's great to be on the show. Well, you know, in my homework, I'm going to bring up a map here, um, uh, the Google Earth image. One of my favorite tools for exploration is Google Earth. And uh, can you see it on the screen there, Don? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. So what I have been pointing out to people is, as I said, here's Ruby Deeps. There's the 426 zone. There's the CRD that um, uh, I-80 is finding. You follow that a little further down and you run into where um, uh, Paycor has found a, a equally as impressive um, CRD. Uh, and then you have down here um, Golden Lake where they've found uh, also what looks like a, a CRD with the same characteristics, high grade silver lead zinc and an overprint of high grade gold. I also highlight that this is a network of faulting uh, and the similar kind of rock packages that goes throughout this. From there to there, you're looking at about 6,000 meters. So that's what's got me really excited, Don. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and, and understandably, um, you know, you know, certainly um, uh, a lot of commonality uh, between. Uh, the, the the various deposits that you just uh, alluded to, uh, Alan, um, the the CRD deposits uh, as well as the uh, the Carlin type deposits in the I eighty ground, uh, as well as the the FAD deposit on the Paycor ground. Um, I, I spent a fair bit of time compiling data uh, on the regional scale uh, over about the last month and a half, and there's really it's really interesting to see that all of those CRD deposits, as well as the Carlin type deposits on the I-80 and uh, PACOR ground, are really uh, intimately associated uh, with uh, some circular magnetic features uh, that were defined by, I'm not sure if it was a ground survey or an airborne survey, uh, but that was really revealing. So it, it showed that there was uh, some common features or commonality between all those deposits. And what it's looking like now is uh, those magnetic features are, are probably reflecting the upper levels of an intrusion uh, that is known as the Ruby Hill intrusion. And uh, so that strongly suggests that, you know, certainly CRD mineralization is is, is likely genetically related uh, to the, the Ruby Hill intrusion. And then, of course, as you, uh, you mentioned a little bit earlier, there's a younger 36 million year old um, a mineralizing event, uh, uh, which, which is really Carlin-style mineralization, which is sort of superimposed uh, on that older uh, network there. So it uh, what, the, what that results in collectively is just very, very enhanced grades uh, in gold and silver. 
and and taking a little bit further south to uh the the golden lake property um the, uh, the that magnetic feature that are referred to uh that those crd deposits uh, are related to to the north that magnetic feature actually transects it trends right on to the the golden lake ground as well too in the northwest portion por portion of the property so clearly you know portions part of the ruby hill intrusion yes in that area there uh, are on the uh golden lake ground which is really encouraging and um really to uh to, to really solidify that you know you've, you've marked the eureka tunnels uh old mine and uh, occurrence on that map and and that's an example a very good example of um uh superimposed carlin style mineralization on the older uh uh, carbonate replacement or CRD type deposits there with very enhanced grades. Uh, there's another occurrence to the south of the Eureka Tunnels that is known as the Hamburg Mine. I'm not sure it's on that image. I don't see it, but we would be in that area about there, Alan. And, and that's another example of a, uh, a CRD system uh, that has been uh, overprinted uh, by the Carlin style of mineralization. Again, that's resulted in 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 very enhanced grades and 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 those occurrences those two occurrences in the golden lake ground as is the case with the the crd discoveries to the north on the paycor and i-80 ground are intimately associated with the contact with the uh what's known as the the the, the hamburg dolomite and the dunderberg dunderberg shale so that is a very favorable contact uh that is present on all the properties and actually is present on the property to the south of uh, Timberline Minerals as well. Right. Um, one of the things that really stand well, you know, one thing that really stands out to me about this whole corridor is a lot of historical mining for CRDs in the area. The Eureka Tunnel is a perfect example of that. Those old timers were moving around a lot of material um, through this Eureka Tunnel. Uh, as as uh, is pointed out here, uh, this is, I guess, their waste pile over here. What really got me excited about what uh, Golden Lake has is up in here, I believe it was, or maybe a little further south, they drilled a hole that had the same kind of stuff that um, uh, I-80 is finding. I think the gold grade was 54 grams. It also right. had good silver, lead, and zinc. Um, so this is a highly prospective area um, for CRD uh, right near that Eureka Tunnel. No, no, and absolutely. So that that would be the uh, what you're referring to is what uh, <clears throat> excuse me is what we refer to as the as the Hamburg occurrence, right. uh, and that is so that that is. Uh, <clears throat> south uh, of, of the Eureka Tunnels. But as I mentioned, it's really associated with that same contact uh, with the, the, the Hamburg Dolomite with the Dunderberg Shale. Uh, so uh, that, that, that contact is traceable over the whole length of the, the Golden Lake property. And as I mentioned, uh, that contact also trends to the north onto the I-80 and the Paycor ground as well as down to the south. So clearly that's a favor, you know, a very favorable contact. So if you look at CRD mineralization, um, there, there are sort of three broad controls on, on, on mineralization for CRDs that I see in the district. Uh, number one is, is uh, uh, a pretty good relationship uh, with intrusions and, and namely the, uh, the Ruby Hill intrusion, uh, which is uh, outcrops actually on the, on the Paycor ground. Uh, the other um, uh, uh, very important control, as you just mentioned as well, is structure. And, right. and there's no question that uh, uh, many of these CRD deposits on all the properties are associated with the uh, sort of a broad corridor of north, trend, north trending faults, of which the Jackson Fault seems to be, you know, one of the more prominent occurrences. Um, so again, uh, all these occurrences show this really close spatial association with these north trending structures. Uh, including the Jackson Fault. And then the third major feature is uh, uh, CRDs seem to be preferentially located uh, within certain rock types, and those are dolomites. Um, they, they tend to uh, deform a little more brittly as opposed to limestones, and chemically they're quite favorable as well. So um, 
all of those three features uh, are very important uh, when it comes to CRD styles and mineralization. And, and we're seeing all three of those features uh, on um, uh, the properties to the north as well as the Golden Lake property. And um, to put it into investor speak a little bit, Don, the way I like to explain it is the faults are your cracks in the earth that are enable the fluids to make their way close to surface. And then what you need in a CRD is a sponge or rock that will allow that um, those fluids to then spread out. And of course, you need the mineralization, uh, the high grades of mineralization that we're seeing at I I-80's CRD, Ruby Hill and at Eureka are, are really off the charts um, when you look at comparing them apples to apples against other CRDs. So, uh, you know, it has all the check marks that you want to find uh, uh, and then some. Yeah, no, it, it, it's a heck of a start. There's 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 no question. And um, just just to get back to the, the, the grades of, of CRDs, uh, uh, that's really what sets the, the Eureka District apart, particularly the southeast part of the Eureka District is that uh, there was a study uh, that was completed by <clears throat> Charles by the name of um, Spencer Titley. And what he did is he compiled data, uh, gold grades from 52 uh, CRD districts in the USA. Uh, the average grade of those 52 districts uh, for CD uh, CRD mineralization was about 3.2 grams per ton gold. If you look at the Southern Eureka Belt, uh, based on produce grades, um, the grade, the average grade for gold in production for CRDs in the South Eureka Belt is uh, is 28 grams. So that wow. that's pretty remarkable. You're talking about an eightfold increase in gold grade uh, for the South Eureka Gold Belt. I, again, I, I emphasize that's for produce grade. Uh, so that would be for a lot of the uh, historic mining, which was relatively narrow uh, and and really going after the good stuff. You know, obviously these days. Um, the, the mining is going to change, it's going to be more bulk mining, and you're going to be looking at 10, 15, 20 meters there. So obviously that's going to bring the grade down a little bit from the 28 grams, but you're still going to be, you know, 10, 11, 12 grams, which is pretty remarkable. Well, in, in any gold system in the world, you'd be happy with 10 grams of gold, and uh, <laughs> wouldn't you, Don? Oh, absolutely. That's that's a third of an ounce. <laughs> so yeah. that's, that's, that's what's classified as high grade these days. Yeah, no doubt. And um, so, yeah, I, I, uh, I also know that another of your efforts, Don, was to um, compile all the data. And, you know, I did a, a compilation of my own and, you know, I've seen a, a tremendous amount of um, uh, historical mining near uh, on Golden Lakes property. And some significant, I'm just going to change the map view here a little bit. Um, significant amount of alteration, uh, geochem anomalies, um, the, the drilling that was done. Um, you can see some alteration in there, I believe it is, Don. Right. Uh, and that coincides with a, uh, a pretty big geochem anomaly. Um, so how has your compilation work been going and uh, and what are you digging out of the data for us, Don? Well, it, it, it's really put um, um, a lot of things in perspective for me because when you get involved with a project um, at, at, at the property scale, uh, there's a lot of detailed information. And um, uh, it's, at, at times, uh, it, it's really hard to, uh, to interpret that really detailed information without having sort of a a bigger picture or, or more the regional picture. And, and so that's why, as I, as I mentioned earlier, I spent a month looking at the, the data from, you know, within the district itself and sort of looked at the commonalities and, and uh, you know, what was common to a lot of these occurrences. And what that's really done, it's put a lot of our property detailed scale data into perspective for us. Right. So it's a lot more meaningful uh, in that now you can sort of see the forest through the trees. And uh, so what the, what the compilation has indicated is that we really have um, many of the similarities that uh, both uh, PACOR and I8 are seeing as, as you know, as, as I've alluded to, uh, as we've talked, 
Uh, but the the other thing uh, that I uh, that it became very apparent is that there's been a fair bit of drilling. There's been over 400 drill holes that have been completed at uh, Jewel Ridge and in the surrounding area. But if you, if you look at and you, you get it, if you really take a deeper dive and you look at statistics, um, pretty close to 95 percent of those holes were shallow holes. They're only drilled between surface and uh, I believe it was 250 meters. Uh, and and so if you look at the balance of the hole, I think there was one drill hole that was drilled greater than 400 meters. So what that tells me, particularly in light of uh, the depths of um, uh, the intersections that both I-80 and PACOR are getting, I mean, the Ruby Deeps is down at 600 meters below surface. Right. That's where they're getting their, their really broad grades of CRD mineralization. Likewise, uh, uh, the FAD deposit on the PACOR ground, uh, you know, they're hitting again between 500 and 650 meters below the surface. Eh? So that's a long way down. So even though there's a fair bit of drilling on the Golden uh, Golden Lake property of Jewel Ridge, it's relatively shallow. Yeah. And and uh, so what the, what the compilation really indicated to me too is we got to see deeper. You know, we've got to right. take it to the next level. And Get underneath uh, we, we've, had, we've, had some, we've had some good success at that relatively shallow depth, but nothing has uh, to date has really held together per se, uh, so that we have a resource or, uh, you know, just, you know, we can't say we've got 2 million tons of, uh, or a million tons of five or six grams there. We haven't been able to define that yet. Uh, so it, it's time really to, to really take it to the next level and, and see deeper and and in order to do that, um, there are some you know some some additional surveys that really have to be done. Uh, but having said that, there still is some very good potential uh, at relatively shallow dips on on some of the occurrences uh, at Jewel Ridge. One of them is what they call the what is known as the Jewel uh, Prospect uh, that was drilled uh, by uh, Homestake in the 1990s. Uh, and that that's uh, really an Archimedes uh, lookalike. In other words, this is a sediment carlin type post uh, carlin type post deposit that's located in the southern part of the Golden Ridge property. And at Jewel, uh, we've got mineralization over a 700 meter strike length. Uh, again, relative shallow holes. It's still open along strike, and it's still open at depth. So we do have potential uh, at 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 relatively shallow depth. But I think the real the real prize. And I, I think what we really have to direct future exploration to is, is really deeper drilling. And in order to do that, we have to do um, some deeper geophysical surveys that will really assist us in uh, targeting that deeper drilling. You know, when you were talking about that, Don, it reminds me of a conversation that I had with you and Downey from um, I-80 uh, on one of my interviews. We talked about this um big geophysical anomaly that they have right underneath the Archimedes pit and the prospect that what we might be seeing close to surface is the uh, is the the continuation of a porphyry CRD SCARN um, system. And so that right away made me look at some elevation differences. And right here, you're looking at an elevation of about, uh, what is it? uh getting the elevation off here a little bit but to make my point this is uh at one level you go a little higher and then you got to drill down deeper and it's probably at about a similar uh depth and now you're going a little bit higher as you get up into these mountains and so it really reinforces the idea that you've got to um, look deeper um, if it's all part of the same system. Um, you may have just touched the top of it with that CRD hit that they had uh, at Golden Lake in the past and, you know, emphasizes why you need to do some deeper penetrating um, geophysics. Well, you know, you 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 may be uh, right on on, on that, uh, Alan, and um, um, I, I did acquire some of the uh, the regional magnetic data uh, from an old uh, USGS United States Geological uh, Survey uh, airborne mag survey that was flown uh, 
it's a number of years ago. It was probably the 1990s. Uh, but what, you know, we, so we got that data, we processed it, and we modeled it because we knew that the, you know, that, that based on our previous work, that the Ruby Hill intrusion uh, was indeed uh, underlying the the Golden Golden Lake property. And what that modeling showed us is that you, you're quite right. Uh, the intrusion, as you as you move to the south, uh, does get deeper. So we're probably looking at a minimum depth of about 800 to 1,000 meters for the top of that intrusive body. Um, and uh, uh, as you go to the north, uh, you can see the gradient uh, uh, very well. So as you proceed to the north, the, the top of that intrusive body does get close to surface. Uh, but as, as, as you mentioned, even on the I-80 ground, uh, even though they're drilling down to 600, 800 meters, they still hasn't seen the intrusion yet. Right. Uh, you know, still within the uh, the CRD uh, part of that uh, system. Uh, but they are getting scarn, and they're getting scarn at blackjack. And so once you see scarn, then you know you're getting pretty close uh, because you can't get scarn uh, within the intrusion itself and, and also in the overlying uh, country rocks there. So uh, here's another uh, thing I pointed out for people on the um, on the east side of the pit. If you zoom in there, you can start to see some alteration up in there. <clears throat> right. Um, so um, getting back to that deeper story, um, you know, in the you could be looking at a porphyry uh, with a CRD over top of it and a scarn over top of that, which is your classic model in these kind of geological systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, no. Yeah, I, that, that's uh, a number of geologists have really been talking about that type of model for a number of years. Uh, I think it's you know certainly been refined over the last number. But uh, the one uh, name that comes to mind for me is Dick Silito, and Dick Silito has done a lot of work uh, in Nevada. Um, he's done a lot of work uh, around the world internationally. And you know, I, I remember even 20, 30 years ago, he was talking about zoning patterns peripheral to intrusion related systems there and and you know this this is a dead ringer for what he was talking about and uh, you know for porphyry copper porphyry uh, does occur at depth and is is really sort of the driving engine for this this whole mineralizing system it, it really just gives you an idea of, of of the size of the hydrothermal system uh which is totally remarkable um because if you look at even now uh, even, uh, you know, the, if you just really crunch numbers that aren't even 40, 43101 uh, uh, compliant, uh, but just looking at the intercepts on the I-80 ground, uh, on the uh, PACOR ground, on our ground, and then to the south and Timberline, you know, you've got 10 million ounces of gold over about a 10 kilometer strike length there. And and with, with, with you know, obviously very good upside. I mean, we're just beginning in this, you know, so that... That 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 is pretty except, exceptional endowment um, for uh, a project that really is just reemerging. Uh, I mean, when you consider that the uh, UN and I eighty, you know, they haven't even been there two years yet. Really, right? Uh, right. They haven't uh, even been a company, for, a public company, for two years. Well, there, there you go. And the same thing with Paycor. I mean, Paycor has only drilled there for you know maybe not even a year. Uh, yeah. Timberline being there, you know, a little bit longer. So th this is a real. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you could say in some ways re-emerging because it was historic uh, production that was done by the old timers, um, focusing on, you know, relatively shallow, close to surface, um, high grade. And that's really what they focused on and, and, and really didn't pay attention to, you know, obviously they didn't have the, you know, technology to really go deep. And there was certainly some water problems, uh, within the oxidized zone there, but, you know, we have much better technology for mining and for exploration right now. So, um, you know, th this is really the, the the in in my view, sort of the tip of the iceberg there. And, and you know, you, you you have to use all the tools that are available to you. And in the case of uh, of Golden Lake um, at Jewel Ridge, uh, you know, as I mentioned, there there are some um, you know still very attractive near surface targets that we we will work. Uh, but you know, in in concert and in tandem with that, we're going to have a really serious look at what's what's at the deeper levels. And, and and to do that, uh, it's going to involve uh, uh, doing um, uh, what's known as an MT survey or magnetotelluric, uh, and uh, that's that's a, a technique that's been used, um, I, I guess, pretty frequently of late, particularly for CRDs in Nevada. 
uh, and and the advantage is that it see it can see really deep. You can get down to 800 meters to a kilometer with an MT survey, and wow. what what MT basically measures it it measures resistivity. Uh, so a resistivity low is a conductor basically. So if you've got massive sulfide mineralization in a CRD, uh, that's going to show up as a, as a as a conductor. And, yeah. and so that's what we're, we're going to do. Um, we would like to do it this winter, uh, but MT survey is really um, um, a major factor. The, you know what what they, it's it's really solar energy that really drives those those types of surveys. And during the winter months, you really don't have the uh, adequate solar energy from things like that, like, like lightning strikes or or even sunlight because you know the sun is much lower in on the horizon during the winter. So we're likely going to have to wait until uh, late spring, uh, uh, sorry, late winter, early spring, until until we can carry out that MT survey, which is really going to help us in in targeting uh, deep deposits. Uh, what we hope to do, and um, uh, I, I hopefully we can get some um, cooperation on this, is like while we survey, do the MT uh, MT survey on the Golden Lake property, we'd like to run some lines over the known zones of mineralization. Uh, i.e. the uh, the fad deposit of PACOR and the ruby deeps of uh, I-80 uh, to get a signature. And uh, if you're getting a signature on those properties and we're seeing similar signatures on Golden Lake property, then we're, we're off to the races. Well, a, um, a, you, something you mentioned there earlier is, you know, was that the the heat engine and the power of the system with the mineralization and the thickness of the intersections is suggestive of a, of a pretty powerful uh, mineralizing system uh, in this corridor. Yeah, I, I, I think that's pretty evident <clears throat> now. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think it was certainly suspected, you know, even, even prior to say this recent bout of expiration, uh, but, you know, certainly, uh, the exploration efforts uh, by by all companies, but you know, in particular, uh, I80 has really brought that home. Uh, you know, ma you know, mainly because they're, they're they're getting some really you know bonanza thick grade intercepts, and that's the proof right there. Uh, you know, to to get those repeatedly, and and you know, over really sizable strike lengths, um, and and uh, to get it uh, as I mentioned. Um, uh, over that 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 ten kilometer strike link that's still open ended really really speaks for the district the strength the size of the hydrothermal system and and really augurs well for uh, you know finding much much more. Yeah, well, you know we're in the right kind of uh, structural um, setting, the right kind of rock packages, and uh, you know we're in the same boat as the other ones where we're finding a CRD so. I'm really excited about the prospect of getting underneath that uh, that package that was hit uh, near the Eureka Tunnel and uh, vector in on on where to follow that at depth because you know we start showing that we've got something like they do at Paycor and uh, I80 for size and we already know there's that kind of mineralization. Uh, Golden Lake could be the next big player in this region. Well, we're certainly very optimistic, uh, Alan. You know, we think we've got a heck of a shot. And, uh, um, you know, the, the, the GF6, you know, really will not only help us in, in the deeper levels of exploration, but also in the shallow levels, you know, because you, what, what you can take with this MT data is you can model it. And, and the modeling produces uh, surfaces, 3D ISO surfaces that you can bring into, into 3D models and you can put in your drilling results, your drill holes. And, uh, you know, so that's going to help you uh, also at, at shallow levels there. I mean, in, indicate, in you know, extensions to mineralization, if there's a rake or a plunge, uh, how deep it may go. So it, it's just, a, in, in my view, just a very, very important next phase of exploration for, for all levels. At, at at you know shallow depth, moderate depth, and deeper depths, and uh, what it's going to do, it's going to position us very well. We're going to have multiple uh, excellent quality drill targets over the next couple of years that are all going to be very prospective. Knowing that um, we do have um, the you know we have known high grade intercepts that are uh, both CRD, Carlin style, and overprinted the styles and So we have those there. We just want to take it to the next level. And, and try to expand out on these so we can define some resources. Is there not enough data already 
no, from the modeling of the rock packages and the structural story to, um, you know, start going deeper in below that CRD? It's it, it's risky to do that. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm a big believer in and and really putting yourself in the best position and doing your homework. Yeah. And and uh, um, you know, MT surveys, uh, as they say, are, are relatively new. Say within the last ten years. And and there are some really very good case histories of using MT, uh, not only in 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 Nevada but also down in Mexico, uh, where they you know they when you, you do the survey you get the data back and model it then there's uh, just uh, exceptional correlation between the conductors and and, um, and 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 some of these deposits and that uh, but then and the real advantage too as they say on is that it sees deeper and yes. the difficulty with <clears throat> Um, it's not really difficult. It's just, you know, it's a fact that um, in the South Eureka Gold Belt, um, based on the structures and the rock types and that, you know, oxidation can go down a fair ways. You can get it get down to 200, 250 meters. And uh, so because of that, when you're drilling through that, it's sometimes it's very difficult to drill through. Uh, sometimes when you hit mineralization, it's difficult to see exactly what you're looking at because it's oxidized, it's friable, and it falls apart. So you want to get below that level of oxidation. Uh, say say we'll say two hundred say two hundred and fifty meters and a lot of the work that's been done so far uh, in the belt and certainly on on the Gold Ridge property you know is is, is not even seeing through that you know right. so we really you have to be able to you know you want to be able to see through that you want to get down to more confident rocks and more uh, say primary sulfides such as what they're getting at uh, the FAD deposit places like Ruby Deep so I think that you know that potential is certainly there on our property so let's uh, let's go after it now. Gotcha, gotcha. Sounds like a hell of a plan you got uh, there, Don. Well, you know, it's something that's not been tried before on, you know, on the property, and uh, you know, you, you you've you've got to be totally open minded uh, about, uh, you know, what, how you're going to explore what it's going to do for you, and you know, so I I think it, it's certainly time, really. You know, it's something different. Uh, it, it's really going to give us a, a much better shot of 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 hitting uh, on on a much larger scale. Um, you know, it's it's difficult to keep going back and you're drilling shallow holes on these very occurrences and you hit, you get a bit of market action and then you keep drilling and then, you know, you get meteoric results and you lose the momentum on that. And, right. you know, you, you can go, you can do that for five or six years and spend seven, eight million dollars there. So I, I think right. it's time for a different tact. And, and 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 that is really to look at some new technology to see deeper. Uh, let's go after the the big fish. Let's go and after it gives you uh, does it give you better resolution as you're going to depth as well, Don? Um it the the the, the resolution, uh, I think I think as you go deeper, I think it's 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 probably similar with a lot of geophysical surveys, EM surveys, whatnot. You know, the deeper you go, uh you you do lose a little bit of res, you know resolution. That's just really the 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 nature of these surveys there, but Given the style and the nature of the MT survey, I mean, uh, I, I'm being very conservative when I say it can go down, it can see to 600, 700 meters. It really depends on how large the survey area is. Uh, but I've heard instances uh, of, you know, a kilometer, a kilometer and a half for depth wow. of penetration. So if we see it at a half of that, if we see it at 600 meters, we see it at 700 meters, anything greater than 500 meters is, you know, that that's taking it far beyond uh, anywhere you know anything has been done uh in in you know look, not only on the property but in the district itself there so it'll it'll be interesting you know as, as i say uh um if we can run some of these surveys over these known deeper zones of mineralization and uh you know we'll certainly talk to to i80 and paycor about that uh is run some orientation lines over these known zones of mineralization really uh get that type of signature and then you know you've, you've got something to compare it with i eh? Well, you worked with you and for a long time over the years. Maybe you could twist his arm. <laughs> yeah, we know we 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 have been associates for a number of years, and you know he's he's been very very help you know very helpful to us, and uh, obviously we we really appreciate that, particularly in my earlier days and uh, as VP of Exploration for uh, Golden well, Lake uh, Actual Ridge. So uh, you know that that's all yeah. very much appreciated. And it, it really just comes uh, in you know being being associated with you and and working with them over the years and, and those contacts are always very helpful. Absolutely, especially when he's so enthusiastic about the entire region. Absolutely. Every time I get him on an interview, he's uh, 
he's talking about the, you know, it's kind of rare when you have one company talking about other companies, but that's Ewan's nature. You know, he's a big picture guy. And if you're going to look at the big picture, you might have to look off your property. Uh, um, yeah. And uh, it's very exciting region. I, I've been rolling up my sleeves for this region for since I started uh, interviewing you in about a year ago and just keeps getting better and better. Yeah, no, it, it, it's, uh, uh, it, it's a remarkable story. It's very exciting. And, you know, uh, clearly we're, we're still in the early days of it there. And uh, it's, it's really, uh, it's great to be a part of it there. And, uh, you know, we're certainly looking forward to 2023. Excellent. Was there anything I didn't ask you, Don, that I should have? <laughs> I can't think of anything right now, uh, Alan. You know, I, I you know, I, I think we're gonna have a lot to talk about uh, over the coming year. Uh, yeah. You know, once once we uh, uh, get some of these uh, surveys done, the the MT MT survey done, and uh, once we firm up uh, some of the uh, the uh, more shallower targets, I mentioned the the jewel prospect there that uh, is certainly very much wide open, and you know, something that we can likely do some drilling on this year. So. Um, it's just a matter of sort of finalizing it all now, getting it all, uh, uh, getting contractors lined up, getting budget lined up, but it, uh, it's going to be exciting year. So we'll, uh, we'll have a number of opportunities to speak. No doubt. Awesome. Sounds great, Don. I'm going to close it up and we can have a chat at the other end. Okay. Thanks. Take care. So there you go, folks. Um, uh, Golden Lake is in a part of Nevada that I think is going to become the most important uh, part of Nevada for exploration. Lots of success happening just to the immediate north with Paycor and to their immediate north with I-80 Gold. Both of those companies have significant multiples of the valuation that Golden Lake has. Uh, Don's on the job now. He's uh, He's compiling all the data. He's getting ready to uh, crank up the geophysics and uh, and get us ready for drilling at I or at uh, uh, Golden Lake. And I say us because I'm an advisor to the company. And what I just talked about is the reason that I became an advisor to the company. I think that this is a exceptional story in the making. Still very early days, um, but offers investors an opportunity um, to get in at a very early stage with a really modest valuation. So as always, my shows are for information purposes only. Important for you to do your homework, speak with your financial advisors. Um, I've talked a lot about this Eureka trend in my uh, my research on I-80 Gold, Paycor. Uh, you can find those uh, reports and interviews on my YouTube channel at Rocks and Stocks News, um, and um, yeah, then go to the go to the uh, news releases for um, uh, Golden Lake, and you can learn a lot about what they're doing from uh, the news releases of Paycor and I eighty Gold, and um, and uh, I think if you do all that homework, you'll understand why Don and I have thrown our hat in the ring to become involved with Golden Lake. And i um, very excited about 2023 for Golden Link. On that note, have a great day and we will talk to you soon.